What's up, creeps? And welcome to another episode of Blood and Brew, where we drink and we discuss horror classics. Tonight, I'm being joined by Johnny from the Johnny Horror Show, and we're going to revisit the iconic horror classic, The Wolfman from 1941. So, grab a drink and join us. Yeah, man. Uh, so, I'm Johnny Horror. Uh, I have been making videos since 2016, and um, kind of started out as like talking heads, kind of like what we are right now, just kind of talking about some random horror movie stuff, and then slowly evolved into kind of like a, a buddy adventure show with uh, my pal Brian and I, and we deal with horror elements and we go to hell and stuff like that. Um, but from there, it also branched out into uh, the Johnny Horror Reviews, which is what I mostly do now, um, uh, which is I just review horror movies and it's, uh, they're, usually pretty intense just because I'm a ridiculous human being. Uh, so they get kind of wacky and there's either drugs, alcohol, smoking, nudity, like it, it all comes into play in, you know, what is usually a, a six to eight minute review on some sort of horror movie. Uh, but besides that, I do also have a, a podcast, the Johnny Horror Podcast. And uh, usually just have my friends on and we talk about movies. And you have uh, been a guest on that a uh, handful of times now. So, yeah. Thank that's, you. That's, yeah. But, hey, man. Thank you. It's uh, it's, it's fun. fun. I, have a, yeah. I have a good time doing it. Yeah. Um. All right. So, with that being said, what are you drinking tonight? Uh, tequila. As per usual, <laughs> uh, nothing if not consistent. <laughs> it, do you have a mixer in that, or is it just yeah, the watermelon? Yeah, I, uh, I was gonna just go straight tequila with a splash of lime, but I didn't have as much tequila as I usually do because um, I'm a little bit of a lush, and uh, I drank most of the tequila last night, so uh, I got a little bit of a, a margarita going on here. It's a little bit of a like a simply that is like the simply brand that we talked about before but they had like a a lime margarita cocktail thing that i hadn't seen before and uh so i i grabbed that just to try it out and um let's see here yeah not half bad <laughs> Pretty good. all right well tonight i'm drinking a beer called rotting earth i'm gonna try to get that can in there because it's got cool can art yeah, you always have the best can art. It's always really impressive. So it's a double dry hopped, double India pale ale at 9.3% alcohol by volume. So I'm excited about that. It's a little heavy for me. It's pungently tropical with candied peach, pineapple, and mango. Mm. And it's from Abomination Brewing. Oh, that's good. That's a good uh, name for a brewer brewery. It's it's got a pretty good flavor to it. It's a little bit It's a little bit on the weird ending. The like the end notes are kind of funky, but I I like it. It's a decent beer. I'd probably rate this probably a 3. I probably wouldn't like necessarily go looking for it again. Yeah. I like something that has a little bit more of a crisper, lighter flavor to it but it's yeah right. you know, when, when my thing with beers is like when you start racking up the percentage i think it it kind of damages the quality of the the beverage like yeah sure like 
your your heart drinking like a 12 point whatever beer but it, it just doesn't taste good if you want that much alcohol in your beverage just drink it just take a shot or something yeah exactly just yeah drink alcohol. Uh, i agree but you know that's that's one man's opinion i <laughs> know uh, i agree with you there um it's that it's not bad it just means i'm gonna get a little bit more weird a little bit more quick that's all that is <laughs> now we're talking i do have a question though i yeah. think about this like when you go to buy your beers do you go do you just like see like oh man this can looks cool we'll try this one or do you kind of like read about it and then go oh, all right this sounds good i'll i'll give it a go like what's or is it a little bit of a a little bit of b for the most part i'm tr i want to force myself to try new stuff like constantly i'm like i want to just for so even if it's a sour if it's a like a t what i have tonight an indian pale ale i'm mostly trying like i love hazy ipas right yeah but this one's like a what is it double dry hopped double india pale ale whatever the hell all that means That's a lot <laughs> <laughs> so like I, i'm trying to just push myself so a lot of times yes i do just go by the can art like if oh shit that looks cool like i'll just grab that and see what it you know because I don't want to just only do hazies on here. I really do love darker beers as well, like stouts and porters, stuff like that. So hopefully that answered that. <laughs> it did. Very much so. Okay. So tonight, me and Johnny are going to review slash discuss and get into the Wolfman from 1941 it's a rated r horror slash monster film running one hour and ten minutes starring lon cheney jr bella lugosi claude rains and evelyn anchors and it and it said online that this was like one of seven films um where the wolfman was in it and that was they were all played by Lon Chaney Jr. Mm -hmm. Now, have you seen any of those or? Uh, so the only other one that I know for a fact that I've seen, I might have seen some stuff when I was younger, growing up. Um, but uh, Abbott and Costello um, meet. Uh, hey, there it is. There's the props, and that was really cool too. God, I love that. It's from it's NECA. I had to. I had to. He's from NECA. Yeah. God, they put out the best stuff. I guess we'll get into it a little bit. But <laughs> I, I, do, I, I, I do love his costume in this. Like, just the whole get up. But I'll, I'll you know, I digress. Um, yeah, no. Uh, I saw uh, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, uh, which I love and is arguably the best horror comedy ever made and um lon cheney jr is in that uh reprising his role as larry talbot and uh, might deliver an even better performance in that than he does in this which is saying something but uh you know that's a that's another discussion for another time so just right off the bat i feel like when you watch movies that are dated like this you have to almost put yourself in a different sort of like mindset yeah. almost as if you were like walking through like an a old gallery full of old art or something and obviously because it's a black and white film that had limited effects and stuff it's going to be harder to escape into it as something that's like current and now times, you know, that it's like you can almost get lost in it easier. What do you think about that? Um, yeah. So, I mean, there's really, I'm, I am a big, big fan of old timey movies. I love black and white features. Um, I watched a lot of them growing up as a kid. And I think as a kid, like, I didn't like it as much, but as we discussed before, I had a little bit of a stricter upbringing when it came to what I could view. So 
my parents a lot of times would just show me stuff they knew was okay and a lot of that stuff was like stuff that they grew up with black and white flicks um you know like Shirley Temple and Abbott and Costello and, you know, Little Rascals and Three Stooges and stuff like that. Um, old John Wayne pictures. And so I do think I have to be in a certain a certain mood to throw on a black and white movie sometimes. It's kind of like it's not unlike watching a foreign film. Like I just gotta be like, all right, cool. I'm gonna read I'm gonna read my way through this movie. Um and yeah. I think, um, you know, that's, that is the case. Granted, I don't go back and watch too many black and white movies, old black and white movies that are not horror movies. So there, there's that too. Um, all that said, uh, very long winded answer. I really like the aesthetic of this film. I like the, the fog everywhere, the Gothic feel, uh, it's clearly, you know, being filmed on a soundstage. Yeah. Uh, I've been to, I'm sure you have at Universal Studios, the back lot where they shot like a lot of the town stuff, you know, which is cool because you look and go, oh yeah, that's like, that's uh, like little France or little Italy, whatever they call it there. I'm like, I've been there. Um, and those sound stages, I've driven by those sound stages in the, in the tram. So that's cool. I, I, it's it's just so classic, you know, and I'm sure we'll throw that word around a lot. Um, I have I have zero problems with the black and white aesthetic, um, the the you know the minimal effects. I'm I love that because it's it's showing what it was them laying their cards out on the table for as much as they could do at that time. They yeah. did, you know, and that's something I really, really admire. Um, I would say there's there's definitely some character traits and character choices that I feel are slightly outdated and uh, things that I, you know, that Larry <clears throat> does that I think might border on stalker-esque and... Creepy? Yeah, that's creepy what I was actually going to ask you, like... Man, Major that cell vibes, you know. So where where is watching her through the telescope, and you're like, yeah, and then yeah. tell describing to her her like that, earrings that's and stuff, the like thing. like you know, what I, do you do? I, yeah. I can forgive a guy who's setting up a telescope who catches a <clears throat> pretty girl, and you're like, okay, cool, he saw her, and he thought she was a pretty girl, and now he wants to go talk to her, but his approach of like. Yeah, you know those earrings you were wearing in your bedroom when nobody else saw you. Like, like oh, that's so creepy. Uh. Yeah, no, I I was actually gonna bring that up. I was like, oh my gosh, dude, what is the, Why does Larry Talbot have to be such a creeper? But uh, you touched on it before I got to it. It's just like, yeah, dude, that's the same way I felt. I'm like, this is such an awkward that whole conversation where he's in the antique shop talking to her is like what are you doing dude you need to like calm it down like take it down a couple notches <laughs> yeah, it's but really you know and i mean we'll get there when we get there but their their whole dynamic is a little uh, definitely felt insanely dated to me but but yeah back to your original question the, just the the picture itself and and how it's created and and how it stands today, I I think it's it's very very uh, uh, I think it's aged very well in the regard to the the effects and even the black and white. It it just feels uh, timeless to me in a, in a certain way. But how do you feel about it? Well, I honestly can appreciate it because horror or not just horror movies, but werewolf movies of today still carry on the traditions that this movie had laid out for them. Like, yeah. I mean, the person who wrote this, like kind of created the lore of the werewolf, you know, and he like the silver bullet thing, the, and God, multiple other things. Right. The but it's like, now. Oh yeah. They, but they still keep, they still hold true to that. Right. In other movies. So I think that's really cool how it's like kind of carried on through. And um, 
Yeah, for me, I, I like seeing like the original and then like where it's like where it's ended up. You know, I like to see how it progressed through the through the years yeah. and how they take that folklore and change it. I I'm really hoping for some other werewolf movie that uses all the stuff, though, utilizes all the cool technology we have and we get something magical that tops and trumps uh american werewolf in london and the howling you know that's what that's what my big hope is but as of the looks of it as of now it just feels like we're never going to get anything like that you know and that's kind of like depressing like seriously come on um so you kind of already touched on it a little bit I was going to ask you, what is your opinion of the look of the sets and the darkness of the fog effects? And you already kind of were like, oh my gosh, I love that. I'm like, that's the part that stood out to me as well, is the fog and him kind of creeping through the woods and stuff. Um, so what was your most memorable scene of the film because of like, like the look and feel of it, you know? Um. Well, I'm sure it'll be another long-winded answer for me. Yes, I do love <laughs> all of those those shots. It just feel, it just feels very cool to me. Um, uh, man, you can almost like taste the fog. Like it's so dense, it's so thick. They're using so much of it. I wonder how many machines they had going back there. Um, no, the I agree with home. that. It was it was over the top. Yeah, it's it's just so dense. Like uh, I can't think of too many movies that that do that now and and now of course it would all be cg and they would add the fog in later it just doesn't feel the same um yeah uh i think my personal favorite scene uh is probably when he changes into the wolf for the first time i just love how creative they got that that'd be something like that that i would do now with no money if i wanted to try and <laughs> you know make something like somebody yeah. have a transformation you know that would be that would be the baseline for how i would do it have someone sit still of course i would speed up the film or something like that and then use some sort of a effect to blend it to make it but that's that's how far we come and i can do shit on my phone that is is cleaner and better than what you know an entire film crew was doing in the 1940s um uh, all I'm going to ask you is, if you end up doing that, can I be the werewolf? Yes. Please. <laughs> okay, thank you. I, uh, I've i been thinking about werewolves a lot lately, and just, again, kind of what you were talking about. I was like, man, I, I just want another I want another werewolf movie. Um, I, keep, I keep thinking of, like, a plot, and, like, in my brain, I'm, like, building this movie, like, what I would want to see, right? And it's just, like, it sucks, because it's, like... I know it's probably not going to happen. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's the story of my life, man. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> oh, this is like a big movie idea. And then you build on and build on and build on, and you're like, well, why? <laughs> because, it's, you know, even even if you were fortunate enough to get a, to, you know, write a script, get a get a meeting and pitch the script, and, uh, and uh, you know, you sold the script, odds are what would end up on screen, especially in this day and age, Unless you did everything yourself, it would not be the script that you pitched, you know? So, exactly. uh, but, uh, yeah, that's my personal favorite scene. I'll never forget that, uh, uh, scene in the Sandlot where, um, <laughs> you're just gonna, you're just gonna slowly transform into a werewolf throughout this, uh, this whole, uh, session, aren't you? I, I just know it. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how to put the werewolf mask on without it being too obvious that I'm putting it on, right? It's just like, it's there up in the corner of my eye, and I'm like, oh, I can't do it. Uh, but, see, yeah. you, what, what, you, what you needed to do was pull a fast one on me. You needed to, like, mute your mic and then be like, oh, I have to, like, try and fix something and then come back and then be in the full costume. Come back uh, as the werewolf. Uh... Yeah, I uh, there's a scene in the Sandlot where um, uh, Benny's being chased by the dog, and he runs through a movie theater, and they're watching The Wolfman. And I was such a little scared little kid 
uh, that every time that scene would come on and you only see like little clips of the wolf man, but you do see him changing into the wolf. Uh, you just see his feet. Uh, it would always scare me. It would always scare me. And that's, that is a, a snippet of a scene in a fun family film. And I, it always creeped me out, you know? So that's, that is the, the power of this, this film to this day. It's still like, I love that scene. Well, they took my favorite scene and they put it in the howling. It was the scene with the uh, the fortune teller where she's telling um Pentagram, Wolfbane. Oh, I'm sick of the whole thing. I'm gonna get out of here. Whoever is beaten by a werewolf and lives becomes a werewolf himself. Oh, quit handing me that. You're just wasting your time. The wolf beat you, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he did. Wear this charm over your heart, always. All right, all right, I'll take it. What's it worth to you? I'll you give you... Do you dare to show me the wound? What? Do you dare to show me the wound? Go now. And heaven help you. That fortune teller lady was just like, she, uh, her voice just carried so much feeling in it. And it was just kind of had a creepy tone to it too. So that added that like extra feeling in there. Like he was just doomed basically. Yeah, it's, it's great. I always forget every time, every time I come back to this film, I don't watch it often, but I do like to rewatch it. I always forget that uh, Bela Lugosi is the original werewolf. I never remember that. Um, I think I remember that he's in it, but every time I go to like throw it on, I'm like, oh yeah, he's in it. That, yeah, I remember that. That's cool. And then, you know, that's... Claude Rains also, right? And he's uh, from the, in the Invisible uh, Man. I mean, we can jump so we got over that now because the invisible man is probably is probably my all-time favorite universal monster wait movie. a second wait i didn't know this yeah um what wait what what is it about the invisible man that makes him your favorite though i need to know this you can't just drop a like a huge bomb like that and not explain why um it, i think it's because he's fucking batshit crazy uh just like from the get-go all these other all these other villains are you better have some candy in there that you can like hand over to me i want to sit <laughs> really bad i just have another beer uh, yeah, that's what it is yeah i forget you load that that's creative i i'm said it before and i'll say it again you know your prop game is just here. i gotta get on that level um uh all these other all these other monsters they're all you know with, with the exception of of Dracula probably but even he has some sort of tragic element to him you know right um particularly if you go off of the uh, you know the Francis Ford Coppola version but exactly um but, dude, the Invisible Man is just on one. And he's so much fun. Like, he's just talking about... There's a scene where he's just like, Ah, you know, we'll start with a good murder. And da -da -da -da. <laughs> we'll kill a train full of people. And he does, like... He, I think, has the highest body count out of all of the Universal Monsters because he does send a train off a cliff if I remember right, it's been a minute, but I'm pretty sure that happens. And that's just savage. And Claude Rain's voice is just, Mwah. it's, it's <laughs> in my ears, listening to that guy cackle and, and lose his mind. Um, great, great villain. Um, yeah. Love it. Uh, so did, were you a fan of the 2010 remake of this, of this movie? So, um, and just really quickly, I was shocked when I thought about how, um, Lon Chaney kind of looked 
slightly he had like a yes. like a look <laughs> right of benicio del toro i, I was, was like at first yesterday <laughs> at first i was thinking like why did they choose but like i love him as an actor right but there's something about his um what is it is it his like what is it his like voice or his um i don't know what it is his accent his, it his, kind of I threw it off for me. It's like his inflection. It's the way he delivers. Yeah, lines that I think you're you're probably getting at because he does have a weird pacing with a lot of a lot of how he says things. I, I loved the 2010 version, but it's his inflection on the words and like what you're saying. Like it just kind of threw me a little bit, and it made me question. But then when I rewatched this, it like really made me think. Okay, they do have kind of like the same there's some facial features there that actually kind of look a lot alike like in the eyes specifically what, um, did, what do you it, it sorry was, what do you think about no the no 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 please I'm not, like this is like <laughs> it's like one of one of my favorite things right now because i swear to god i was watching the movie yesterday and i was like you know if there's an actor alive today that resembles Lon Chaney Jr. to any effect, it is Benicio Del Toro. And I just like, I was just like sitting there going, fuck, man. <laughs> I, so, to answer your question, there's, there's, I have like an early date with my wife. Uh, we went to go see that movie together. We both got like really dressed up and everything. We went to a, a movie theater uh, out in LA and whatnot. And it was, it was just a fun theater experience. And I walked out going like, I, one of those films that I had little to no expectation. It was just, you know, I've always liked ever since the Sandlot, I've liked the idea of the Wolfman. So I wanted to go see that movie. I saw it. I didn't think it was life-changing, but I thought it was a fun theater experience, and I did not think it was a bad movie. You killed the wolf. Well, there's no crime in that, is there? The wolf was Balaam. You think I don't know the difference between a wolf and a man? Balaam became a wolf, and you killed him. A werewolf can be killed only with a silver bullet or a silver knife or a stick with a silver handle. You're insane. I tell you I killed a wolf, a plain ordinary wolf. On the gore scale, <laughs> where do you feel like this lands? Because, yeah, I'll let you um, go ahead and say. I will say that this film does, for the time, we're talking 1940s. Things are things are very very vanilla when it comes to what you can and can't put on screen. Um, but Agreed. they do mention multiple times that there are severed jugulars and stuff like that. You know, they're not they're not particularly PG with the description of how people died. So that to me, I was like, all right, for the time, that's that's probably pushing the boundary. Um, so let me see what you got there, you know, and I'm going to try and put this in, in the time frame of the 1940s. So we'll just, uh, dude, I'm going to go, uh, uh, probably somewhere between Savage and Grizzly. Again, this is 1940s. This is what we're talking about. You know, now if, if, you know, you want to. Savage and Grizzly right here. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now Johnny. I didn't see any blood in this movie. Are you no, sure no, that this no, no. is your final answer? This this is what I'm saying. I'm saying for the time, for the 1940s, what they put up on the screen, that would probably be in that ballpark. Now, if you're talking this day and age, what we see, it's at the very bottom, of course. Like there's we yeah, it's there's nothing there's nothing in this there's nothing in this picture. So we can go right in the middle and just go, you know, yeah, you know, that's, that's, again, for the time, for the 1940s. <laughs> okay. I, 
again, I don't remember, even though there's been multiple werewolf attacks in this film, I don't even really remember seeing that much blood in this movie at all. I don't, I don't think there is any, to be completely honest. So, so I'm going to go ahead and have to say that it was dry. And this is the first time that's happened for me. Um, but yeah, really the biggest, the biggest issue in this film for me, if we're talking about nowadays and how things are portrayed is that there's no reason for Gwen to even be remotely attracted or care about, uh, Lawrence, there's just no reason for it whatsoever. He comes She's off. She's about to get married. She's about to get married to another guy. She's about to get married. She is at the end of the picture. She is getting ready to. She wants to run away with Larry. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. Why? Exactly. You've done nothing but bring you trouble. Like, <laughs> are you just like? dying for some action what's going on over here like is it just your you know judeo-christian you know beliefs that are just keeping keeping you in a mindset of like oh i gotta wait till i get married but here's this other guy and this is just this is this is appealing to me like that's the only justification i can give um you know uh that that whole dynamic is is really just interesting. Yeah, that <laughs> that particular portion of the film hasn't hasn't aged well, but that is of the time as well. I I doubt that you could go back to many films of that time and find uh, many roles where women are um, empowered. So. Uh, that's that that is the thing it's just it's just mind-boggling to me there's there's nothing really like the only time larry does anything good because if, if you look at him he ran away from home because he essentially wasn't getting the attention that's what his father that his whole spiel does he wasn't getting the attention he went off and did his own thing he only comes back when his, his brother, brother died killed. in a hunting accident, right? In a hunting accident. And even but like, wait, tried... just really quick, since we're touching on that, didn't that seem a little odd, though? Like, the fat, like, did that seem a little bit like a weird, like how they just threw that in? Or did that not, did that just flow good for you? Because for me, that kind of felt a little off. Like, your brother just died in a hunting accident, like... Is that the real, like, is that how he really died? Or did something, there's something else to the backstory of it. Because the dad also come came across as, like, not very, I don't know, loving or supportive in the beginning of the film as well. But towards um, the end, he kind of takes a turn. But in the beginning, you're like, what? Well, it makes sense in regards to Claude Rains not having a particular amount of affection towards... Um, Lon Chaney Jr. Just because they they that is that whole conversation between them, you know, like you went away and like I obviously I've always you know it's this long tradition of like Talbots like the the oldest is the most favored. Like he gives that whole speech to him. So the understanding of their um them being estranged that that makes sense in that regard. What doesn't make sense to me, and the hunting accident bit, like, it, it it doesn't bother me as much as, like, when we're first introduced to Larry Talbot, he's in a car, he's being driven, he's smoking a cigarette, and then... I have to, I have to be honest, all I could think about was the backdrop of that, like, the, <laughs> the, the background going by, like, I was like, ah, oh, I don't know why this is bugging me so much right now. It, it does have a corny vibe to it, but again, that's that's of the time. The thing that really bothers me is like, you know, when when the driver's like, ah, yes, Talbot Hall, and then, you know, Lon Chaney Jr. kind of like gives him a pat on the shoulder and like smiles with his cigarette. And I'm like, and then we find out he's going there to, to 
kind of be with the family because his brother just died. And you're like, why the fuck are you smiling? <laughs> why are you happy at all? Like, your brother just died. And exactly. I mean, unless he just absolutely hates his brother, which is which would be another, you know, negative against this guy. Um, and and the way the, the father's fairly reserved. Claude Rains plays it fairly reserved. I don't think there was an expectation to have, um, you know, a lot of depth to his character. But, you know, maybe a little bit more anger and frustration at the fact that his preferred son is now dead yeah um but all that said yeah larry talbot is not a likable character he's selfish he's creepy the one good thing that he does in the film is go and try and save jenny and that's what you know dooms him everything else he he does up to that point is is selfish and creepy selfish. so he's not yeah. like really an admirable character until after he's already been i you know punished so exactly i feel the same way about that i yeah so if we were gonna double feature this film with another film that has the same type of like vibe or feel to it what would you what would you double feature this with i feel like you already know my answer because i've already been pushing this film so hard like i said when i was watching this movie i was like man i just want to watch the curse like i just want to watch the curse after this because i feel like that's that is a that is a leap forward for the same story the same like not the same story but the same vibe the same feel into the 21st century you know we take this this very traditional uh, this very traditional you know monster movie and then amplify it to something very dark and a little bit more um a little bit more thought-provoking uh in my my personal opinion that's that's my my pick what do you have I would go ahead and say that because we're going with the old school stuff, I would stick with the old school stuff, and I would probably double feature this with the Dracula. Is this? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we're at that part, we that stage. We're at that stage of drinking right now, guys. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that's probably what I would go. I would go with that. and um, Because Dracula, Wolfman, Vampires, Werewolves. I mean, I... That's, that's your jam. Right? I don't know what it is about it. But uh, it's what I go for. Um... You know we are getting a we are getting a new Wolfman movie with uh, Ryan Gosling. You know that is that is happening. So, I mean, I'm not trying to be mean, but that kind of hurt my heart a little bit just hearing you say Ryan Gosling and the Wolfman in the same sentence was like my heart just like it broke a little bit. Oh, come so, on. what do you? Have you ever, have you ever watched? Uh, have you ever watched Drive or um, Only God Forgives? That 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 guy's got some chops. I love Ryan Gosling in romantic comedies, guys. In romantic comedies, he's fucking amazing. All right, well, um, wrapping things up. What movie are we waiting on that's going to come out in theaters that you're just like? Oh my gosh, you're so excited for and you're hoping that they don't fuck it up. Um probably my my biggest excitement now is um th there's two answers. I'm I'm after seeing the trailer for Meg 2 um and me being okay. a, a a shark fanatic um the first Meg is is 
pretty fun. It's not as fun as it could have been, but I feel like Meg 2, it, it just, at least from the trailers, hopefully it seems like it's going to be the right kind of stupid where you're just like, this is just like dumb, 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 dumb. Let's go balls to the walls, full blown popcorn movie. And at least I would say as many people die in the trailer for Meg 2 as do die in the actual film, The Meg. So that right there is a, a good start. So I think that'll be uh, that'll be fun. Um, the film that I'm most excited for and really hope that they don't fuck up, though, is uh, The Last Voyage of the Demeter. The uh, Yeah, I completely agree with that. Yeah. Um, I know that's probably the one that you're probably most stoked for because it is vampires. Um, as I've probably stated before, Dracula is my favorite book of all time. Not uh, just vampires, though. It's Dracula. It's straight up just like it's yes. fucking Dracula. The, the OG, as it were. Um, and that particular chapter, because it's just based off of a single chapter in the novel... That particular chapter was one of the creepiest because it's just based off of, like, the captain's log of the Demeter and just notes about, like, yeah, so-and-so got sick. Now so-and-so's dying. Now so-and-so's missing. There's rats everywhere, dead rats everywhere. We can't figure out what's going on. Half the crew's gone. And by the time the boat gets to, sh to, gets to harbor, everyone on, on the ship is dead. So if they can manage to do, I'm, I have a sinking feeling that they're going to leave like the two main characters alive somehow, which w wouldn't ruin the picture for me, but I, it'd be kind of an eye roll because I feel like these days, like no one, n even in a horror movie, unless it's like a super indie picture, like if something's going to get a wide release, studios aren't cool with a, a bleak ending and that is the way that the chapter of the Demeter concludes is that everyone on the boat is dead so um if they can manage to not pull their punches and just more or less stick to the source material I think that could be a really really cool uh feature completely agree I'm uh I'm hoping that they put a lot of effort into the the way that the creature looks when he's like not in like human form mm -hmm. and they actually take time with the way that he dispatches people because if he's just in there and they try to make it quick and snappy and it's a lot of CGI and we're just Hollywood trying to make a quick buck, then I could see it being a problem. But if they actually take the time and make you feel those yeah. kill scenes and they do a little bit of character building, oof. Yeah, I uh, I agree. Already, you know, I don't think there's, in this particular stage of the story for Dracula, there's no reason for him to be in his human form. And we see a little bit of what that creature design is in the trailer and even the poster. So like what I see of that, like cool, creepy vampire. If you just stick with that, beautiful. If you need to see Dracula at the beginning as a human and at the end as a human, that's, that's great too. Go ahead and go ahead and do that. But I think yeah. I do hope that they just go for a full-blown monster movie, which is what it looks like, which is great. I don't need, I don't need, that is my biggest gripe with the the Coppola version of Dracula, is that they romanticize him and make him, you know, trying to get his true love. In the original source material for Dracula, Dracula is just pure evil trying to eat people. Like, that is all he is doing and it's up to this core group of heroes to try and stop him. And it is so fucking good, guys. I swear to God, <laughs> if you have not read the original Dracula novel, please go do it. It is perfect. I cannot recommend it enough. 
well, damn it, now I want to do two different movies with you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to do Bram Stoker's Dracula, because I feel like we both have a lot of shit to talk about that movie. Well, dude, but, I'm, I'm here for it. Whenever, whenever you want to do this, I, I don't care. We, we can do it, you know, once a week. Let's, let's make it happen. This is a blast. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you for coming on. I appreciate you, you know, taking the time. And uh, yeah, I'm going to link Johnny's, um, what is it, YouTube channel. Hey, that's a good idea. I like that. I'm going to have to do that for you. Look forward. <laughs> Down below in the comments or in the description, what have you. And yeah, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Johnny, do you have anything else to say? Uh, just, you know, hey, thanks for having me. This is always, this is always fun. Like I said, uh, I'm always game. Let's, let's keep doing it. Um, and if you made it all the way to the end of the video, thank you. Uh, thanks for listening. It's just, it's just fun to, to talk horror movies with pal. What can I say? I completely agree with that. Thank you, and have a good night, everybody.